Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the previous video we were talking about building the monorepo packages and we were talking about the config package which we were using in the user service. So user service uh, earlier was using the config uh, module. Now we moved that config module to this package, config package. And here this is exposing this package version also. You can see this is the package version 1.0.2. And I'm using the same package version in the package JSON of the auth service. I mean the user service. 1.0.2. I mean you can so let's say if I'm changing something in the package, currently we are not publishing these packages to the remote. We are just using them locally. So what you can do is you wanted to re-update the package version. You can update the package version like 1.0.3 and just uh, use the latest package in the user service, update the package JSON and then do the pnpm install. So it will fetch the latest build output of this each config package. And how we are, let's say, I'm going to my package, config package, and this is what I'm exporting from this. I will also add another line, export everything from so we have config module, config service, config defaults. This is like another interface. Now, if I want to uh, publish this package, what I will do is first, I need to just create a build for this, for this package. So if, uh, Uber Eats config, Eats config, I will just create a build. Okay. And then I will also update the package version for this. I will just call it as a 1.0.3. This is the new minor version I have created and in the auth service, user service, I will just update this to 1.0.3 and what you can do is, you can just do a pnpm install, so it will add this latest version as a dependency, here you can see in the node modules, it's, if I just check the package JSON, it is using 1.0.3, so we are good, we fetch the latest code here you can see the config default is available. So this is how you can just do the incremental change and can use the latest version of the package. Okay, so this is the each config. I resolved all the build errors in the user service. So now you can just do the build for the user service. Here this is my each user and I can just do simple build. What it will do is it will build my this auth service, user service, which has a dependency on this uh, auth service sorry config service and if you want to build the dependent package every time i mean i don't want to get it from the cache so i, will, I have just removed this from the cacheable operation so whenever there is a build command we will build the dependent module first and then we will uh, build that source module okay it's like dependent module it succeeded and then it is building the user module user service so similarly, what we can do is let's go to user service source. Here we have other things like logger, right? Logger can also be moved. So I will go to the packages config and there is a logger also. So I will reuse some of the code source config TS config. I will just move this to a logger and I will just replace it with uh, logger 1.0.0. And then just config source package JSON. I copied it from the config. We need same package dependencies. I will change the files. So I will move this logger module from here to there. So I need logger middleware, logger module, logger log level. Let's move it to inside source. And we also need to add some dependencies. Okay, so we are going to import everything from logger. Export everything from logger module. I mean logger module we don't need to export. I mean we are exporting already on logger service. Is there an interface we need to log levels? That's it. OK. 
okay now there are a couple of more dependencies we are using like let's say the web moment and winston so what i will do is we need to add these dependencies in this package so i will go to that package logger and i will do pnpm add winston and moment and okay let's see do we see any other build errors okay we also need to add the dependency of each config so this is like interdependency of the packages and the, the we will just use latest version 1.0.3 Okay, when we do pnpm install these things will get resolved in the dev dependencies we have added this should be in the main dependencies not in the dev dependency it's config winston let's see what else we have express this is like we are using just a typing here so let's go to the top do pnpm install so it will install the config module inside a logger module so we should be able to it will get resolved now logger middleware it is talking about express typings so we will add that in the packages cd logger and npm install minus minus cv dev express and types node should already be there let's see so we are adding these packages why i'm doing npm it should be pnpm add okay so if we just check the packages and okay this gets added in the dependencies express we need as a dev dependencies okay so this is good now let's try to do the simple build command request socket okay these things we have in the logger module this is using config service so we'll just use this dot config service log level logger module and logger middleware let's see i see just only couple of errors i mean these can be just a warning express typings and this is my package json each logger i will go to nx console and inside packages i can see there are two packages now each logger and there is a build command so it also dependent on the config and now it is building this so this is all about express module so we need to add this as a dev dependencies types express that is missing so what i will do is let's go to pnpm add types express okay this has added i will just remove it from here and put it here and go to the top okay now we will just do the build again and go to the logger file also exit okay there is some ts lint errors i guess match make it underscore let's do the build again okay the build is successful now what i will do is now i will start using the build 
logger module from this package so let's go here in our uber it's user service src logger i can just do delete this and what i need to do i need to add a dependency first eats logger 1.0.1 1.0.0 and we will do pnpm install before that let's uh, add the logger module that should be i guess in the domain module we are using logger module somewhere so it will become each logger app logger module this is good okay let's find any other place so are we using the logger module anywhere else we can just check it by doing simple build command on the each user first of all do the pnpm install so we'll get the logger module added uh, on to the user service and then we will do simple build command on the user service it will build the dependent module there may be some errors which i can expect because there are a lot many places we are using logger right so we'll just need to replace that it's logger and we need to resolve this one by one we should have done the setup like this only we using monorepo I mean, still we are not uh, that much late. We are just fixing these things and creating uh, the best platform for building any other service. So, user service, user module, user controller. Do we see any other error? So, here also we need to change its logger, and we will do the same command again. Maybe still there are some places where we didn't fix it, so obviously we'll get some build errors. Like in the user module, here we need to fix it. It will become eats logger. There was only one build error. Okay, now this should have been resolved, and we have moved one more package as a dependency. So this is app logger module this is our user service everything works fine now what is the next thing what i will do is i will move this uh, database module also because we are going to have this database module on most of the services i mean almost every service will have this we are using postgres you can see inside auth we have this core shared and then there is a storage this is all about uh, having a database module so what I will do, I will create a package and create database we already have. I will copy a couple of folders and we'll create this another package. Packageation, it can be each database. Okay. Rest everything is fine. We may not need this dependency, so we'll re I will remove it. Each config, we still need that dependency. And then inside source, we will just replace the things coming from database. So database we need migrations, we just need interface, modules, DB service. I mean, this is not much code and I'm just moving this into a package so that I don't need to duplicate it everywhere. This is index.ts which is a root file and it is going to import the I mean it is going to export everything from database interface database module and what else we have which we want to export db service db service there is nothing so I'll just remove db service it's just like a database module which is using type ORM so now these dependencies because to build this package we need this type ORM nestjs type ORM dependency in this package also and this is the main database module and it depends on each config that's fine we have the dependency 
nextjs config nextjs type orm and type orm these modules we need to add here so let's go to packages pd database and then we will just do pnpm add nextjs type orm and type orm these are the two main dependencies and then we also need to add each config is already there in the package json so let's go to the top and do pnpm install so i will get config module and if you are using logger module just add the dependencies similarly like each config so there will be another dependency each logger 1.o.o and do pnpm install so you will get two modules here you can see config and logger both the dependencies added to another package and this is my database module everything looks now resolved so this is what i'm exporting what i will do now i will replace the database module from here this is the database module which we are using in every service which we will use in every service and it 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 is using config service so we added the dependency of config service here there can be another database logger we could have added that is using the logger module but that's fine here database module we are exporting so db module and i will add the dependency of this first we need to build it then the package name is database its database so in our user service i will add the dependency first we need to build it so now we got another package its database i will create a build if build is fine then i will add the dependency of this database module inside a user service build okay i was expecting something like this there may be a type orm issue are we using the latest version of type orm okay, let's see i will just check which type orm version we are using in the nestjs service so here you can see type orm O dot two dot thirty eight, and inside packages we go to the database. O dot two dot thirty eight a dot O dot two. So it's using type orm eight dot one dot nsjs type orm because there are two different copies of this package nsjs type orm here we are using. 8.0.2 and here nest js yes, typo rm in the database module this is the database module this is the package json 8.0.2 so what is this error module no exported so after spending half an hour i was able to fix that uh, build issue which we were facing in the database module the issue was the type or modules i need to upgrade because we are using this typescript version 4.9.x at the workspace level and the earlier version of the type or was not compatible so i need to upgrade it to 0.13.12 i mean in the whole workspace you should use one common typescript version which is uh, 4.9.x and nextjs type or m nextjs core common i'm going to upgrade them to 9.x on all the places where we are using these uh, nestjs dependencies so we won't see these uh, build issues because uh, earlier version of type orm was not able to was not able to get compiled with the latest version of typescript which is 4.9 now it works fine we can just build the database module database package so this is my package now we are growing with the number of packages and applications and then once this is built i have already added that in the user service so this is our user service and this is my package json here i have added the database you can mention the package version and inside the code 
we started using this as a EATS database. We are importing a DB module from there. So we can just build the user service. We'll just do the build. So now it is dependent on these three different packages and it is able to build successfully. That's the success for us. Now what I will do is now what is the next thing? We have a user service and which is already functioning, working. In the user service, I'm going to add a couple of more routes that I can do offline. So this is the authentication controller, auth controller, and then there is a user controller. So because we are going to create a restaurant service where restaurant admins and the restaurant users would be able to manage their menu, manage their food items, the their listing and all custom configurations. So I'm going to add a couple of more routes. Let's say add permissions, remove permissions. So system admins who has the system administrator role can onboard, can change the permission of a user and can add a permission like, okay, you are a restaurant admin, you are a restaurant user. And if you are a restaurant admin, then there will be another authorization in the restaurant service. Okay, you can add the, you can create a menu items, you can create the food menu items. I mean, you can manage your whole uh, menu for your restaurant, but you need to have a particular role, which is restaurant admin that we are going to add here. So that system admin, by just assigning the permissions can give you the that particular role and once you get that role you will have that in the token and you should be able to access those apis so i have created a restaurant service just a copy of this user service we will remove and we will add a couple of more things so this is now new new application new microservice you can say so that is for the restaurant admins and the owners we will write entities, the whole business logic. Currently, we don't we don't need the auth controller. We just need just a basic validation of the token. So we will just clean up the code here for this or restaurant service. And instead of user, we are going to create entities for the managing the food menu items. Okay. So these are these we are going to cover in the couple of videos. And then we will also do clean up on some dependencies. So that we don't see any build issues hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my another video and in this video we are going to talk about uh, some database stuff so we are going to build our another microservice which is so here we are done with the user service we will add a couple of more routes which i will do offline and then we are going to get started with the restaurant service the restaurant service where we are managing the restaurant dishes the restaurant address, restaurant types, what restaurant is offering. So in the restaurant, we will have mainly two entities, restaurant and the dish. Because like uh, what all the menu items, what all the dish items it is offering. What are the types? It is it a, like, like restaurant will offer dishes, right? So the it, we will have food type. Is it a vegetarian, non-vegetarian or vegan? We will have category category of food may be a main course salad desert beverages and then the we need to upload a different logo images for those food menu item for the restaurant it will be just like okay it will be a street shop number first of all restaurant address is a separate entity where it will talk about the locations and all and then restaurant itself in the restaurant we can say open it uh, close it what is the restaurant logo what is the name description what is the primary business of the restaurant? Like what is the cuisine? Uh, logo URL, delivery options, open set, close set, and all these options we are going to add. Similarly, I just try to draw this using dbdiagram.io. And here is our restaurant, restaurant address and dish. You can see dish will have a primary key. So this is the dish mean table which we are going to search on the landing page. Okay, I'm interested today in eating Italy or some South Indian, North Indian or maybe some some Italian food or Chinese food. So you will just enter the name. So all these search will be coming from here. Right, that is coming from the dish. 
and dish will have a relationship with the restaurant because you are going to store the restaurant ID as a foreign key in the dish. Similarly, the restaurant address because sometimes the address is long. The street, state, pin code, country and all. So we are just putting a restaurant address as a different entity and the restaurant ID as a foreign key. Now user we already have. So this user is can be a normal guest user. So that de depends on what the permission that user holds. If that user holds permission as an end user or simple user, then he's like the user who is going to order the order the food items on the platform. Otherwise, if your role permissions is a restaurant admin and restaurant user, you are going to create a restaurant. You are going to manage the restaurant. If you are admin, you will first create the restaurant and the who is going to assign you the role? System admin. There is a system admin sitting on the top and this uber eats platform will onboard a new restaurant then first of all we will create a restaurant and we will onboard that user as a restaurant admin so restaurant admin can create for now we will allow him to create restaurants and delete but once the restaurant is created you cannot just go and delete that okay there will be some constraint of deleting a restaurant so you create a restaurant and you Add the name, description, the, the full banner image which we are going to show on the front end and open set closes it. Delivery options, what type of cuisines you are offering, contact number uh, and the restaurant image URLs. And then this restaurant will be a reference on different tables. So currently we are just talking about dish, restaurant address and the favorite restaurant because let's say I'm the user. I can bookmark some of my restaurant as a favorite. I can bookmark some of my dishes as a favorite dish. So I can mark some of my dishes as a favorite dish. I can mark some of my restaurant as a favorite restaurant. Similarly, these tables will grow. Because when you see the menu, uh, we will also get the orders. For now, we are talking about only two services, user service and the restaurant service. But when you start doing the ordering, then we will also have a tables related to the order and payment and tracking and lot of other and number of different things. So these are the tables for the restaurant service or you can say food menu service because here we are registering the food and in the dish, you can create a number of dish. It's just like we need a flashy image for the that particular dish. What is the food type? What is the what are the ingredients? All those descriptions the user end user has to put. We may mock some data from outside world. Okay, these are the the bulk dish items for this restaurant, and then we will create it. So here we are going to use typo RM and we can fetch the whole restaurant with the whole menu items, the dish menu items with the address. And once user logs in, we can also fetch the favorite restaurant and the favorite dish. There can be another table, favorite dish. Because uh, you might have bookmarked some of your favorite dish from the favorite restaurant, right? So similarly, favorite restaurant, there can be another table, favorite dish. Okay, so we are going to ahead with the restaurant service. So this is our restaurant service we are going to expose couple of routes like creating the restaurant updating deleting i mean the managing the restaurant entity that's like uh, you can say crowd operation by a particular rule so we'll allow only restaurant admins to do that and then dish menu items once you create a restaurant you can onboard the dishes on that restaurant okay so in the restaurant service i have done some cleanup and i moved docker compose and docker compose override outside because now we are increasing the microservices and this is the docker utils docker compose override we need to create uh, more containers so this is the postgres so what we can say the this is postgres here we can just name it as a postgres user postgres restaurant These are the two images we have. I mean, both are using Postgres image. Now we'll just change this to Postgres user.
this will become Postgres restaurant. Just another container of database and a volume mapping we can do. Restaurant API data. So this is let's say restaurant API data. So I just move, I'm just moving the Docker Compose out so that uh, port mapping can also be different here. The host port is 36, here is a 35. And at the root, we can do Docker Compose up. Maybe containers are already running. I will just do Docker Compose up. Okay, it is just creating the database, the users and all. That is a one part of it. Now, going to our applications and trying to understand the system. So once user will come, user will be logged in through the user microservice. After that, because all these services have their own database. We don't have any linking. It's just like loose foreign key we are going to populate here. So this is the user ID. Once you login in the payload we are putting user id email your permissions and then when user is coming to the restaurant with the role as a restaurant admin then we are going to store like who is the creator of that restaurant the created by that will be the loose foreign key because this is we are creating across microservices so here we are not going to put the whole user reference just a user id we are going to put everywhere where the user is doing the actions like ordering the items or creating the restaurant as a restaurant admin then we are going to just use the loose, loose foreign key because we already have that data in the token so we don't need to, to communicate to other services okay give me the user data we may need but in particular cases once you do the login this is a user entity user database here is a food menu here is like a restaurant database we are going to have and food menu items and all these database tables we are going to have here and this is the order table so we are going to have order database the food menu restaurant will deal with only the restaurant database yes the we have the user references user id which we are getting from the payload the permissions user email id and we are going to reference wherever is needed the user id which is coming from the token not coming we are not fetching okay the user exists and also we are trying to decouple services as much as possible and we are going to uh, keep the expiry of the token as minimum as possible so let's say if user is deleted and still we are using the other services with the same token that won't be possible okay so we have created a simple database diagram what we are going to do let's convert this into the entities and then the apis for the restaurant service 